Here's a model of a fracture failure mode in an elastic material. We have a strip of material and I'm going to bend it. First we'll run this nice and quick so you can see the whole process. Uh, I have two uh, clamping points moving towards each other at the bottom of the screen and I have a red link here. One of the elastic sections has been weakened. I've created a defect there. And that'll be the first link to break. And we'll see cascading fracture. We'll see multiple fractures. There you go. Let me back up and show that process in more detail. Now let me slow down the animation speed and then uh, we'll run again at that much slower speed. And here's the red link. That's where we're going to see the initial fracture. After it fractures, uh, we're releasing the bend. We no longer have two anchors holding. So as the material bits find out that, that they're only linked on one end, they'll go straight. That's what happens to a material that's not clamped on both ends. It prefers to lie straight. There we go. So you'll see a straightening start to occur, working out both ways from the break. The secondary break, which I'll explain in a minute. Straightening again following the secondary break, and then straightening following the third break. Uh, that straightening is moving at the speed of... And what we've got is a situation where uh, if the material could remain close to a tangent to this curve, as if as the shockwave propagates around from the red cl uh, clockwise all the way around to the right hand clamp, if the material could swing fast enough outwards from that first single break to maintain, to, to remain at a tangent to the curve all the way along, you can see it would have to swing quite a bit, uh, it would have to swing out like a whip, then we wouldn't see a secondary break because, it, as you know, uh, at a tangent the derivative is constant. So we're not, uh, we wouldn't be imposing any uh, bend at all where the shock wave is passing. Unfortunately, uh, the shock wave continues to move at the speed of sound, but the flapping whip of material that's released uh, can only move rapidly early on as, as it becomes larger and larger uh, just from, being, from increased length. It gains a larger and larger moment of inertia. So here goes the break, and you can see at first the straightened material is flying out close to a tangent line, but it can't keep up. It's always got a constant torque, just the, the straight where the straight piece joins the shock wave. Uh, the material has whatever torque it naturally has. Uh, but the, the moment of inertia of the flapping piece of material, of the straight piece of material, is growing linearly with time. And so the, the motion of the material becomes slower and slower. I'll just let it play at this uh, low speed. See the initial fracture of the red bit. It's running very slowly. There we go. You see it straightening out. It's a, it's a little bit subtle to see where the shock wave is. You see it straightening out. And when the angle between the straight section and the curved section becomes too great, you see a secondary failure. Finally, at this last case, uh, you can see the tangent actually, or the, the flapping straight part actually is close enough to a tangent that you never do see a fourth break. And anyway, that's the that's this particular uh, failure mode of, of cascading fractures on a bent sheet of material. Uh, thanks for watching.